Hi, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely Jaunt where we read better, not more. I also just noticed that there's been a toothpaste stain on this sweater the whole time I've been filming all these videos, and yet I remain committed to wearing this sweater. I think it's, I think it's out of frame. <laughs> so today we are continuing our discussion of the Odyssey. So far we have covered the differences between the Iliad and the Odyssey, and we have taken a look at two Greek concepts, Homo Sophrone and Oikos. I will link the playlist above and below so you can check out those videos as well. And today we're going to look at the major flaw that Odysseus has and the essential sin or violation of the suitors. So let's take a look at Odysseus's troubles. Huh? Odysseus faces a lot of troubles on his way home. Some of them are his fault, but some of them aren't. The first place he landed after tr leaving Troy is Ismaros, where the Caconians live. He decides to attack them, kill their people, take their women, and many possessions. A typical raiding of a city, right? Uh, but my first thought is, Odysseus, you already sacked Troy and despoiled it. How much more do you need, my dude? My second thought is, Odysseus is unable to manage his men. They want to stay longer to get more spoils, and in the end they are defeated by the responding army. Odysseus's men thus have a lack of self-control but they also are unable to be controlled by the outside, by their commander and king. So it shows a weakness in his leadership. And this is, these are two things that Odysseus needs to shore up in himself before he like sort of earns the right to come back into the kingship of his own original kingdom. Next, Odysseus comes to the Lotus Eaters. Here we see that they're not violent, but his men become addicted to the Lotus and never come back to the ship. Is this another warning against a lack of self-control? I think so. And finally, and most importantly, Odysseus comes to the island of the Cyclops. Apart from being an interesting anthropological study, so we, it seems like the society that's described here is more based on like a hunter-gatherer type of living or nomadic shepherding rather than the farming and clearly like settled city-state that the Greeks develop. This is where we see Odysseus's main flaw, which is he must, he must heal himself by of this by the end and it's his own lack of self-control so odysseus takes some men up to go and investigate he introduces himself with the name of nobody nemo but soon Poly polyphemus a cyclops captures them and holds them in his cave he eats a couple of his men raw and odysseus has to think fast about escaping they do so by blinding polyphemus with a giant fire-hardened spear then gripping woolly sheep from up the, around the underbelly as he takes his flocks out in the morning and as odysseus is sailing away Polyphemus cries out, nobody is harming me, which of course then the other cyclopses around him are like, what, you, what, well, what are you complaining about if nobody's harming you? Which is again a comedic scene. Then Odysseus can't help but take credit for his victory. He's about to get away scot-free and instead he declares his true name. Instead of nobody, his name is Odysseus and that's when his real troubles start. From there, Poseidon does everything that he can to prevent Odysseus from making it home because apparently Cyclops is his son. So here we see the overweening pride, the lack of self-control, and that is what Odysseus must overcome to make, him, to make it home and be successful as a person. By the end of his adventures, his men are not able to master self-control and they all die before making it home. Odysseus has a trail run of self-control with like training wheels when he passes the sirens. This is the greatest temptation of all. Odysseus passes with some aides being strapped to the mast of his ship and making his men stop their ears with wax so they can't hear the siren song. Then the final trial and insult occurs on Ithaca. While disguised as a beggar, Odysseus sees how some treacherous ladies who should be in service to Penelope are actually running off in the evening to sleep with the suitors. This fills Odysseus with rage, but he beats down his chest. He can't reveal himself now. The time isn't right. He would give himself away. And at last, Odysseus has learned self-control. Can you tell I'm into this? I'm a little bit into this. Okay, so let's now turn to the suitors. What's their deal? What are they doing that's so wrong, that's deserving of this bloodbath, this death? And Athena is so insistent upon this point, both to Telemachus and to Odysseus. She's constantly like, and now you gotta go home and kill them all. Let's do it, cut them all up. 
Well, it's two parts. First is that they're eating up the household. So they're hanging around, taking advantage of the rules of hospitality, and they're eating up all of Odysseus's wealth and drinking all of his wine and eating all of his sheep while just hanging out for way too long. This is taking advantage of the rules of hospitality. The second thing is that they're insincere in their suits for marriage. Repeatedly throughout the book, it says that if they were serious suitors of Penelope, they would go to her father and make a request and offer gifts and so forth. And this is further evidenced by the fact that they're sleeping around with the servant girls while they're there. Of course, Penelope is perfectly happy to let their charade continue, charade, uh, charade, because she really doesn't want to marry them either. And the downside, of course, is that you have these jerks in your house eating up all your food and just sitting around and being jerks. This violation, especially of the rules of hospitality, seemed to be Athena's primary motivation. She is quite insistent that these suitors must die. But this also may be political as well as moral. Remember, she is the goddess of wisdom and warfare. I think, I think we also have to see happening here is what is necessary for Odysseus to reestablish his kingship. He has to prove his right to rule again. There is no room in the political landscape for him to let one of these rivals sort of hang around and, and live after he comes back. He has to destroy all of them so that his right to rule is unquestioned. So that's what I have for you today. I'm curious, what do you think Odysseus's major flaw is and what the suitors are doing wrong that makes them so deserving of death? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. In the next video, I'm going to take a look at the underworld. Until next time, I'm Alexandra and I'm still a bibliophile. Thank you.